My name is Beth Turner. I'm here with Gambling Insider on the Huddle. And today I'm with Manuel Stan, the new CEO of Katina Media. Manuel, how have you been? I'm very, I'm doing very good. Thank you. Very, very nice to meet you, Beth. Wonderful. Lovely to meet you as well. So let's start off things with a simple one. How have you been finding things at Katina so far? I think some things are very good and some things are not so good as you'd expect mm. in every, any new place. Um, I think I'm very nicely impressed with the team how engaged motivated the team is and i think it's a it's it's a great place to to be right now i think we have a lot of very dedicated talented staff that are highly engaged i think the things that are not so good probably the focus in the last few years or in the last period of time i think katina has tried to do a lot of things and i think you can see the result of that with with people being pulled in left and right and i think We've probably been missing a bit clear priorities and transparency for the teams. And I think, again, coming back to teams trying to do too many things at the same time. And I think this is one of the big things that we'll try to address. But all in all, I think uh, we have a great team in place. Uh, as long as we, we align on priorities and it's clear for everybody what we need to do and we say no to things, I think we're, we're, we're in a good place right now. Fantastic. And I really appreciate your honesty in that answer. So you've been in the gaming industry for near on 20 years now, and you were with Kindred for 16 of those. Throughout those experiences, what have you learned and what do you hope to bring to Katina from those experiences? I think that's, that's a very good point. But taking a step back, actually, before Kindred, I was on affiliate side. I was with Bad Brain for a few years. So my journey was pretty much affiliate operator back to affiliate. And also in the early days, I built my own affiliate network my own affiliate side so i have the experience from both sides so i think that that's probably the, the most important thing that i bring here i i have a hands-on experience being having been an affiliate myself having worked for affiliates but also having been with an operator for so many years and as you know about kindred and unibet the affiliate program there is one of the leading ones in the industry and we've been working with katina and others throughout the year so uh, very good experience I think the other thing is the fact that I spent the last 20 years, both Europe and North America, getting a very good understanding of the differences between the two geographies and how that can, can help Katina. Nice, nice. And that leads really well into my next question. How does it feel switching from an operator back to an affiliate? I think it's, it's, it's good. It's back to basics, right? It's, uh, I, hope, I hope it's back to basics and I hope it's getting back to the things that I once fell in love with and how I got into the industry. And it, it feels really good. I think, again, the, the big upside is that having spent so many years on operator side, you do have a fair understanding of what operators need, what their demands, what their needs, what their, uh, what their strategy looks like. So trying to implement that in the way you're responding with your products as an affiliate, I think that's that's key for us going forward. But it's uh, it's definitely fun. And I'm personally the big SEO fan from back in the day so again it's it's nice to go back to basics and it's nice, nice to get your hands in dirty again and and work on on the things that actually make changes it's it's fun absolutely and I can't imagine what it's like coming back to the affiliates after you've been with an operator for so many years it is fun though <laughs> I think both there there are there upsides on, on both sides right mm -hmm. um but I think this is, again, this is closer to my background to where I started. And also uh, my kindred career, a big part of it was spent on the affiliate and SEO side. So again, I never left this part very much. I was always close to it, but it's it's good to be back on this side. Amazing, amazing. And when you were first offered the job as CEO at Katina, what were, you, what were your initial thoughts? And the first thing you do, obviously, everybody knows the share price, right? That's, that's the elephant in the room. It's not... Uh, we're still stepping into a place where we've been uh, under a lot of pressure for the last six, seven quarters. We, we've seen the results. We, it's a public company. We can we can see the results. So the first thing is looking into the share price, looking at the results and understanding what's causing that. Next thing is to look at the product and understand what can be done. So the first impact or the first the first. Um, 
I guess the first touch point was understand from financial performance what happened and what can be done. And the next one is to understand like, well, actually, these are our products. Is it, are, are they good products? Are they great products? Are they product suffering? Is it something that we can improve? How can we improve that? So your mind goes really quickly into what are the next steps from now? Can we get the share price from at that point was around the five, six Kronos mark? Can we get it back to 20, 40, 50, 154, um, which is a long journey. But I think the, the thing that did excite me are the products from Katina. So looking at the, the brand portfolio, we have some really good products at Katina. And again, I think one of the things that we're trying to do right now is coming back to that clear priority and focus for everybody pulling the same direction. Katina has thousands of websites of products at the moment. We're a team of just over 200 people. We cannot manage properly thousands of properties, thousands of sites. So one of the big exercises that we're doing right now is, is trying to clean up a bit and figuring out what we're focusing on. As you can imagine, any Pareto 80-20 rule, in our case, is more extreme. We make much more than 80% revenues from much less than 20% of our properties. So making sure that the team focusing on those is, is key for us. And I think that, that that was the thing that attracted me in the early days, looking at the, the assets of Katina and thinking how we can actually improve the revenues with, with what we have. For sure, for sure. Just doing the maths real quick. If that's, you know, a thousand properties and 200 people, that's five a person. I can understand feeling, you know, spread quite thin on that. That that wouldn't <laughs> work. And again, you know, uh, for, for everything, I think priority for literally everything that you're doing, setting the right priorities and making sure that the entire team pulls the same direction is very important. So for the last few weeks, that was one of the biggest exercises that we've been doing, looking into prioritizing everything that we're doing, geographies, products, projects, just making sure that it's it's properly socialized in the company and everybody understands what we're what we're trying to do and how we're trying to do it and make sure that again 220 people are pulling the same direction mm, absolutely and it's a big task but i really appreciate and respect you stepping up to that but you're also stepping into some big shoes stepping into michael daly's shoes who was the former ceo how do you intend to navigate that i think uh, first of all the greatest respect for Michael is that he's, he's a good friend and obviously we know each other from the industry for a very long time and indeed big shoes he's, he's done a fantastic job at Katina thankfully for me I'm not stepping on his shoes on my own but I also have a new management team which will help me navigate through that um I think it's very important to note that it's not just me being new at Katina but pretty much the entire management team will be new by the end of the year uh since first of April so since beginning of Q Q2, uh, we've had a new CFO, a new COO, a new CTO, and myself. So that that's that's four brand new people in the team, and the team is absolutely fantastic. Uh, we have a combination of new blood with people who have been here for a while, people who have grown with the company, and people who have proved themselves. But everybody is highly motivated, and everybody is keen to to take this challenge. And I think that's that's my my biggest thing right now that those may be big shoes, but I have other people's feet to help me fill in those shoes. So we're all in, we're all in this together. And I think as a management team, we're highly motivated to, to turn this around. I like that. I like that visual. Lots of one pair of shoes, but you're all figuring out. It's a bit spidery, but you know, I like it. <laughs> so what do you feel are some skills that are unique to you and how do you intend to apply them at Katina? I think that, that's the key, as I said earlier, that I, I for 20 years, I have a pretty good overview of the entire industry geographically from product perspective, worked on both the key verticals, casino and sports book, worked in North America, in Europe, worked on affiliate side and operator side. So I don't want to say jack of all trades, but I, I, I've been involved a little bit into everything. And I think that that's my biggest uh, upside right now, I guess. And the second bit that I do have a very very hands-on approach I think very often um, and I come from a background where I, I started building websites I started actually building websites right I, I was in charge of the content on those sites and the SEO bit on those sites so the conversations about the projects everything that's happening right now I'm trying to look at it as being part of the team and just bouncing ideas with the team and be part of what what we need to do how, how it can happen so I think that's probably the biggest thing that I, I bring to the table and um, but also 
being with with Scandinavian companies for for the last twenty years, I think that's also from cultural perspective, it's a, it's a really good fit with Katina with with the rest of the management team and with with the company overall. Fantastic. Now to kind of widen the scope a little bit for a moment, what are some current hurdles or some common hurdles rather? What are some common hurdles that are currently being faced by affiliates at the moment? I think that there is a number. Unfortunately, there's, there's, <laughs> there's quite a few, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to overcome all that. I think from the industry perspective, um, there are a few. Uh, possibly the, the bigger ones are uh, in terms of taxes, if we're looking at the uh, US particularly, you can see the tax spikes in some of the states and that will always have a negative impact on, on affiliates. Um, Illinois, the, the most recent example where, where the tax hike will lead operators to try to optimize their PLs in in other places and marketing spend is very often going to be one of the first victims of PL optimization and that will have a direct impact on affiliates reducing CPAs and so on. I think the the media or the media rules when it comes to advertising, the advertising rules in some of the, the the regions we operate are also challenging, and that can continue to become worse. Um, hopefully, we we see that not happening in most of the U.S. states, but Ontario, for example, is an example where um, we have that. Uh, from outside the industry, I think Google will always be your search engine, but let's. Let's let's call the name. Google is is the biggest uh, the biggest threat out there uh, at times. I think from our perspective, we're trying from from search perspective to have a very long term solid strategy in place and not to be impacted by changes that are happening very often from uh, from Google from search engines perspective. But regardless, you will still be impacted sometimes positively, sometimes negatively that does happen, but where we're trying to make sure that our strategy is as solid as possible. We're, we're not trying to take any shortcuts. I think these are probably the biggest things that, that are are impacting our, our industry at the moment. Absolutely. And I've heard a lot of people say in terms of Google and searching, I know with kind of AI being integrated as well, that's changed a lot of things for a lot of people. I know that's been a big topic of conversation at the moment. Absolutely. And I think for everybody in the media industry, nobody can look look away from AI. AI is happening. That's the reality. And I think it's just a matter of how and when it's being used by, by all the companies. And for us, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. We're, we're Obviously, we're investing in AI. We're already communicating our investments in AI for a couple quarters, and we continue to invest. I don't know if it's going to be a game changer in the very near term. But there's definitely something that we need to integrate in the way we operate, in the, in the way we, we build content, in the way we optimize content. So that's something we've started doing already. We'll continue to do that. Um, but again, I said, as I said, I, I don't know if it's going to be a game changer. I think for us, it's just a matter of optimization and scalability. Those are the two keywords that we're trying to, to focus when it comes to, to the AI ventures that we're part of. Wonderful. Now, just to round things out today, Mamon, I really do appreciate your time. What are your long-term and short-term plans roadmap-wise for Katina? And I know you've we've mentioned this, that you're trying to kind of change Katina's finances. As you said, we've seen the quarterly reports for the past couple of years, past six, seven quarters. How does that roadmap tie into turning those finances around? I think... The strategy that we're trying to work on internally here is based on people, product, profit, and we're actually doing things in the same order. For Q2 already, the work started by Pierre and Mike, the CEO and CFO from, from beginning of Q2 was already around the new organization model, uh, a new operating model that's focused on product. So making sure that we have the right structure in place, the right people in the right places, and we're focusing, those teams are focusing on the right, um, on the right things is the first piece in the puzzle in my mind. So it's, it's just making sure right now that we have the people, we have the processes, we have the fundamentals right. That is the short-term focus, making sure that that works, that's that's working as it should without any flaws. Next thing is the product, making sure that our products are where they need to be. Again, the products are the bread and butter of Katina's business. So making sure that we have the we're focusing on the right products and we're doing the right things there. And in the longer run, in my mind, that will lead into profit, that we're, that will lead into improving the profit and getting back where, where it needs to be. I don't have a public target to say in terms of where the 
where the revenues or the share price needs to be. Uh, as we've communicated before, we need to return to growth in the second half of the year. That's that's our uh, immediate target. Um, but that is the order that we're we're, we're working on. We're focusing on people and, and and fundamentals and processes and moving into product and product optimization, and that will lead into the financial long-term goals. Thank you so much for your time today, Manuel. I really do appreciate it. And all the best in the new role. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.